Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Roundup uh, with me, David Madden. Today's date is the 4th of June and the time has just gone 11.40 British summer time. So we had a quite a positive start to the European session this week, uh, largely, largely put in place by the positive numbers we saw from Friday's non-farm payrolls in the US, which had a strong finish in New York Friday night. We saw a decent close in Asia overnight and that positive sentiment has also dripped into uh, to Europe here today. Also, looking at the political situation in Europe, things are looking a bit more stable. Later today, uh, we are expecting the Italy to form a new government. Um, it will require a vote in both the lower and upper house, but given that five-star movement and the League Party hold about 60%, 60% of the seats, it is likely that things will go ahead. So that's also adding to the positive sentiment here in Europe today. Uh, it is worth noting that uh, trade talks between China and the U.S. Are, um, ha- haven't uh, haven't uh, taken a step in a positive direction. No, no new uh, no agreement has been reached. So it looks like the, the two nations are, are still on course for a trade war. But um, the time the timing for the, the latest round of tariffs hasn't actually has yet to kick in for another ten days or so. And obviously we do have a, the have the G7 meeting at the back end of this week. So things could progress then. Uh, taking a look at the week ahead, the week ahead article can be found on our website under the news and analysis section. So if we take a look at the major uh, economic and corporate stories of the week ahead, uh, tomorrow we have the services PMI figures coming out. Uh, it is worth noting that we had some manufacturing PMI figures out of the Eurozone la- last week. And looking at the Eurozone manufacturing PMIs, uh, the, the, both, the major countries um, such as France and Italy and Spain all had economic, all showed um, PMI manufacturing reports which came in below economists' expectations. Uh, Mario Draghi, the president of the ECB, is concerned the Eurozone is going through a bit of an economic, economic soft patch. And, and given the numbers we've seen out of Europe in recent weeks, um, he's, he is right to be concerned. So the services figures are going to be of particular importance given that, given that these are all very much service focused economies and uh, they do account for a large percent of output. Uh, tomorrow on Tuesday we also have full year figures from AO World on Tuesday and Wednesday going across the two, across the two days. We have, bank, we have a rate decision from the Reserve Bank of Australia and we also have first quarter uh, GDP from Australia. On Wednesday we have full year figures from the real estate company Workspace and on Friday we have the trade figures out of China and for any, for any of those who trade the Australian dollar, uh, or trade mining companies, or trade high-grade high copper, or indeed the FTSE 100, you need to be paying close attention to the Chinese trade figures, uh, especially because China's got a major appetite for commodities and raw materials, and any signs that their demand for minerals is declining could have a knock-on effect to uh, the metals on mining companies, and in turn the FTSE 100, seeing that it's a fairly sizable uh, mining abortion. The trade figures will also be important uh, on Friday, seeing as China has an enormous trade surplus with the United States. Conversely, America has a major deficit with the United States, and they will obviously want to look to look to re-imbalance uh, the, the trading relationship. So the, tra- the Chinese trade figures uh, are, are going to be of particular importance, uh, given the, the ongoing horse trading between the United States and China in relation to the trade situation. So taking a look at a few of the major markets now, start off looking at the FTSE 100. So the FTSE 100 has had a decent run uh, for over over two about two months now, or even longer, uh, over two months now. You can see very impressive run here. Market's been pushing steadily higher, hitting all time high. Only at the back end of May, we have seen the market pull, pull back a bit due to the kind of political uncertainty in both Italy and Spain in recent weeks. That has seemed to dissipate it for the time being. So you have seen the market push higher again, and if you hold above this level here, the recent low. Of 7,591. If we stay above that above that level, it's likely that we, we, we will continue to push on higher from here. So let, let us watch out for the upside. It could be 7,800 or 7,900. And if you do have, have a break below 7,591, we could see us head, head back down towards 7,482. This area of consolidation here from late April, early May. Take a look now at what's going on in the German market, the Germany 30, the DAX. 
So the DAX also has had a fairly good run um, in, uh, in in recent in recent months. Uh, it's pretty much in consolidation area in around the 30 moving average, which comes into play in around these levels, in around 12,700. So as you can see, the market is edging a bit higher. We've seen a slight de decline in negative momentum, so we could see the market push on a bit higher from here. We would need to kind of make a size of a break away from the 20 moving average. We saw a lot of consolidation in around here, so it's, it would appear that after this pullback, traders are a bit uncertain of which way the market is going to go next. So if you do continue on the kind of upward trend that's been in place for a couple for a few months now, since uh, since the end since uh, late March, if you could do a higher, we could be looking heading back towards 12,900 or 13,000. And if you go north of 13,000, the next area to keep an eye out for would be the 13,200 area. It's only if you have, if you have a size of a break south of this blue line here. The 50-day moving average, which comes into play in around 12,580, a move below that, a size of break below that, could see us back down towards the late April lows of uh, 12,300. This area here, 12,311. Take a quick look now at the Italy 40 of the Italian market. Like I said, the Italian market obviously had a major sell-off uh, in the last couple of weeks, but the market has been rebounding. We're not. We're not fully back into a state of you know uh, major confidence for the Italian market, but things are looking as if they're heading in the right direction. So after the enormous setup that we've had here, we saw a steady increase in negative momentum. Now the market is pushing higher, and we've seen a decline in negative momentum. So the possibility that this upward move could uh, could continue, and should that be the case, we could be looking at hitting, hitting this, targeting this red line here, the turning moving average. Which comes into play in a, in around 2,000, sorry, 22,670. If you go north of that, they keep an eye out for the 50-day moving average, which comes this, this blue line here, which comes to play at 23,226. If we fail to break the 20-day moving average, we could be looking heading back down towards uh, 22,000, the, the figure itself. And then if you go south of that, keeping keep an eye out for the May lows, are also the multi-month lows, which come to play at 21,038. Take a look now what's going on in the US, the Dow Jones. The Dow is broadly in good shape. Um, it's not as healthy looking as, as FTSE 100, but we're well off the uh, well, well above the 30 moving average. We're actually comfortably above the 50 moving average, this is the blue line here. But actually, the 100 moving average, this yellow line, has been acting in resistance uh, recently, and so that will need to be taken out. Which comes to play in around 22,400. This area here, which comes to play in around 22,000, um, 22,400, and sorry, 24,000, um, 790 in around there. And if you go north of that, the next area to keep an eye out for it would be the late May high of 25,085. And if you go beyond that, we'd be looking then at creating multi month highs. So we could look, looking, looking at any back up towards. 25,507. Uh, move to the downside. If you break below this recent this 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 break candle here, which comes into play at 24,250, we could be heading back down towards the 200 moving average at 24,114. So obviously the oil market is, uh, has also been uh, quite volatile in recent sessions. So take a quick look at what's going on in oil. Taking a look now at the Brent crude oil price. So Brent crude has recovered some of the ground that it lost recently. Uh, after a terrific run for about 11 months, uh, the oil market suffered a major sell-off in kind of mid to late May. There's a lot of speculation and a lot of talk. The, uh, the Saudis and the Russians are looking, are looking to increase output uh, at, the, at, the, at the next OPEC meeting in a matter of weeks. Uh, we have seen the market bounce back, give, uh, pull back some of the ground that it's lost. It's still in, it still is in, a, in its upward trend. It really hasn't uh, kind of shaken off that, but watch this space. If we continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 79. If you go north of 79, we could be looking at the big psychological number 80, and then 81, 82, so and so for, uh, beyond that. Move to the downside, we might find some support coming to play at this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 74, spot 55, and then move below that, we may find support coming to, at this area here, this, this, this potential support area, 
of 73.10. And if you go south of that, you can be looking any back down towards $71 the figure. I take a look now at Brent crude oil. It's a fairly similar chart. On, sorry, I, took it, I just looked at Brent crude. I take a look now at WTI. It's a fairly similar chart on that. We obviously had a, a more exacerbated sell-off on WTI. So WTI is firmly below the 50-day moving average, this blue line here. It's actually currently resting on the 100-day moving average, which comes into play in, in around $65.25. So while we hold north of that, there's a possibility we could be looking at heading back up to the recent highs of again, 68 or, uh, or, or, or 68.50. And then, of course, go beyond that, we're looking towards $70, and then beyond $70, up towards the recent high of $72.79. Should we see a sizable break below the 100-day moving average here, we could be looking at testing the early April lows of $71.78, which is this price in here. Taking a look now at what's going on at the euro versus the US dollar. After losing quite a bit of ground uh, at the back end of last week, we saw this, this a very interesting candle here, a, a bullish reversal here, a fully engulfing here. Uh, this candle here uh, could, 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 in, could be an indication that we could be looking in for a bit more of a push higher uh, in the euro versus the US dollar. Notice how this, this positive candle here essentially in Gulfs nearly all of um, the, um, the, the previous day's candle. So this could be look, this could be a sign that. We are looking for a bit of a reversal, a, a bullish reversal on the on the euro versus the US dollar. So if we continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 117, one spot seven, one spot 1750. And if you go north of that, we could be looking at any back up towards one spot 1830, and then beyond that up towards one spot 20. Uh, if you do if you do manage to kind of drift lower again, uh, we could be looking at heading back down towards the kind of 115 area down around here. And last market to look at, take a look at what's going on in the pound versus the US dollar. Pound dollar is also having a, a bit of a correction after a fairly sizable sell-off over the recent weeks. We can see here that the market has been kind of making a few days in a row we've, we've had so far of steady gains. Momentum has swung from negative to positive. So while the market's pushing higher, we're seeing a steady increase in positive momentum. So it's uh, the, 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 the MACD indicator is confirming the upward move. If we're getting to push on higher from here, we could be looking heading heading towards 134.50, uh, and if we go beyond that, the next big area to keep an eye out for will of course be the 20 moving average at one spot 35.79. Moves to the downside. If we take out the recent low of 132.04, we could be looking at heading back down towards 131 or 130 itself. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.